a skating relationship we call. IBM is one of the oldest companies in, the, in, in, in America, but it is the first company that avoided unionization. <coughs> now, how they avoided unionization, escaping relationship with the union? They avoided by providing the best workplace culture, the best uh, benefits, the policies, lifetime employment in the past, and lots of companies emulated IBM and avoided unionization. It's not only the high tech, even in the manufacturing sector and the many steel mills in the United States, they have no unions now because they all adopted this strategy of escaping relationship with the union. In other words, the, that's where I come back to the political and uh, the, the local structure. In India, you can't avoid a union because of the Trade Unions Registration Act. Seven people can go and register and come to trouble you. But in the United States, 50 percent plus one worker has to vote and say we want the union. Only then the union gets certified by the national labor in the election process. No time they exceeded more than 30 percent support. As a result, the union has now given up. Toyota, which has to deal with a union in India, has no union in the United States or Canada. So that's the human resource strategy. Dealing the line managers as well as the HR managers with the human resource strategies. And so the roles are clearly defined, but at every level it is advisory role. In terms of dealing with the worker, it is the line manager who is responsible. And the human resource manager is just an advisor and educated advisor. Next, please. Next, give him an activity. Give him some autonomy to do things the way he thinks is better to complete the task. And the primary concern in a cost leadership is the results. How do we produce the product with less cost? And the employee has to be low risk taking. If you take will be permanent and there is no stake for your job. The way your productivity drops down, you won't get the bonus, but we'll give you some time to adjust and recover and recuperate. But if you fail to drop the production, you might even lose your job. Okay. The HR strategies for this work simplification, automation, work rule changes, work rule changes to do some autonomy, and job assignment flexibility, job rotations, you must have heard job enlargement, these are some of the things that are experimented, subcontracting for non-core activities in the organization, and part-time employees are being used in the non-core activities. The non-core activities are those, as I said, for Coca-Cola, marketing is the core activity. And the rest are non-core activities. Next, please. And for the innovation, the customer is the king. In other words, until 1990s, the business management marketing process used to conduct surveys for corporation. What does the consumer need? And then you produce that product. But today that's not enough. Steve Jobs used to say, you come up with a product, you create the product, then you educate the consumer. Now all the products that Apple is producing now, I'm sure if you conduct market surveys, the consumers will never tell you that they want that. So he comes up with a product, educate the consumer, and then the consumer buys, and he captures the market. So you remember the first vision statement that I showed you? A computer for every man, woman, and child. That is Steve Jobs' vision. So you have to be way ahead of what the consumer needs if you want product differentiation, innovation strategy for growth. And the creators have to be allowed to take risks, risk taking. And if they fail, you have to condone and you have to encourage them. The employee who makes a risk is supposed to learn from his past mistakes by learning they improve. It's a learning process. And a high tolerance of ambiguity and unpredictability. Because if you want innovation, 
there is no clear cut. He is thinking outside the box and you have to have patience to let the innovator come up with the new product. And the HR strategy is required. Select highly skilled like Microsoft, do more discretion, use minimum controls and greater investment in employee in terms of training and giving the benefits. And the next one, reward occasional failure. In other words, don't punish for failure, but reward and make sure that the employee is learning from the past mistakes. Next, please. Of all what is known for high quality, in the good old days, Americans used to change cars every third or fourth or at the most fifth year. But since Toyota entered the market, you, you don't want to get rid of your car. Then what happened? There are oil company executives sitting on the General Motors Corporation. If you reduce the electric cars, people won't use petrol. If they don't use petrol, the oil companies lose profit. So the oil company executives sitting on the General Motors Corporation, they said, you have to get rid of your electric cars. By that time, they already sold one million cars. So they pressured the General Motors to such an extent that General Motors withdrew all those cars that they sold within two years by paying to the owners of those cars $2,000 more than what they paid and used for two years. So what happened? If they kept manufacturing electric cars, it's a product differentiation, innovation. General Motors would be the leader. Now Prius came with the, Toyota came with the Prius hybrid car. And the Highlanders, most of the Toyota cars are going to be the hybrids, eventually the electric cars. Now General Motors realized they have become a copycatter. They said, okay, we are coming up with an electric car, but people don't trust now. The consumer is afraid any time that they may withdraw those cars or the service of those cars may deteriorate because of the pressure of the oil companies. In other words, you have to have a commitment to the consumer. You have to have a commitment to your workers. And if you only serve to the shareholders' representatives and the board of directors and their whims and fancies, you don't have a strategy. And if you don't have a strategy, you can't defend your market and you can't grow in the global markets today. So the strategic management requires a good business strategy and HR strategies. HR strategies have to fit with the business strategy. You can't have an innovation strategy and you can't have rigid rules and regulations of, on your employees. So the innovation strategy requires a lot of discretion. And the market surveys of the MBA and engineering graduates entering the market in the United States clearly indicates 90% of the students want, what do you want? They are given 12 factors, all the way from uh, uh, independence, autonomy, the salary, and uh, all kinds of uh, employment security. The topmost that the graduate students want in the United States now is autonomy, independence. Give me freedom give me a job, give me a target, I'll produce. Where the salary fit, it's halfway down. And it is moving downwards. Employment security is the last. In today's American market, Canadian market, the graduate students don't care for employment security. They don't want to stay with one company. If you are a creator, if you are an innovator, you know your employer. You know the employers are after you. So that's the kind of a worker you want to attract if you have an innovation strategy or for cost leadership strategy. So that's why human resources, and you must have been hearing, talent attraction and talent management is the slogan of the major corporations today. Talent, talent, talent. Because of the shortage of the talent, in North America. And if you if, if the talent attraction management strategy is important, 
naturally and automatically human resource management strategies are the most important for success, growth of the uh, organizations in the world today. Thank you very much for your patience and for your understanding. Thank you. Business strategy and human resource management. This is for the attention of all the delegates. All the delegates are invited for the cultures and dinner at Cypria Resorts at 6 p.m. today. The transport will be arranged after the dinner to the city for all the delegates. Now I take privilege in calling upon Mr. Vinay Chaminti to present this paper. My area of research is organizational communication, but I would like to take my opportunity to share some, uh, share my point of view about organizational sustainability. The theme of the conference, as, as we share with each one of us, is strategic HR and for uh, sustainable competitiveness. Uh, I would like to talk about organizational sustainability because I'm assuming the moment the organization is sustainable, the competitiveness factor is already included in sustainability. Uh, but before I start my presentation, I need to uh, thank Mr. Subaru sir because he has already given 50% of what I wanted to share. That's perhaps because we are academicians. Uh, and so far, as I was observing, uh, all the ideas that I have been hearing to since morning have been specific to some business situations. That's because these are all practitioner ideas. Uh, I'm not a practitioner, I'm an academician. So I would rely on borrowed ideas uh, which are published in scholarly journals. So my presentation would be more generic rather than specific. Next slide, please. Now to me, the question that matters when, when I think of sustainability is, do we know our future? If we are certain about our future, then there is nothing that we have to do or we have to worry about. But the point is, future is completely uncertain. Therefore, we need to plan, we need to, we need to prepare ourselves to face any kind of future. Uh, and like, like a straight there are three questions that I am more concerned about. The first thing is, do we know our future? The second one, uh, I'm not sure if our current performance at any level of the organization can indicate the future future ability to perform. The third question, I don't know if we have a reliable way of assessing our future readiness, our readiness to face what future may throw at us, frankly. I keep hearing the planning that most organizations do about getting ready for 2020 or being big by the time of 2020. But I'm worried because people don't really talk about 2050 or 2100 maybe. That's because we don't know how far we can think of. Next slide please. Now this is one book that recently caught my attention. Linda Gretton is a professor at London School of Business and she's also rated by Times as one of the most influential thinkers in management. Uh, she had a research program called The Future of Work and she had many organizations and close to about 6,000 participants uh, contributing their ideas in her research program. And her idea was to find out how the future of work could be, how the future workplace could be. That was because you don't know, I mean, consider 1960s, people never thought about having a software engineering kind of a job. But come 2000, software engineering becomes a job that everybody craves for, it is a lucrative opportunity. The kind of jobs that are coming into the markets are different. The kind of opportunities that the market is creating for the prospective employees are different. So I don't know, by 2010, perhaps the nature of business itself is completely changing. So we need to have some kind of parameter to see what kind of change we are about to face. So she had this research program to figure out if she can come up with some ideas to give us hints about how future could be. Next slide please. time. And therefore, there is a tendency for people to do one full-time job for, for earning their life and perhaps in their part-time they do something that they are extremely passionate about. And as time goes on, this is a place where he puts up videos that are invariably of duration between 10 to 15 minutes and these are educating videos. And he started putting up these videos as a pastime activity. And his efforts were recognized by Google 10 to the power of 100 project and he has got some funding. And today, he has close to about 3000 videos posted on his website and that is the biggest educational resource for most of the US students today. And slowly, the universities are also adopting his resources as a part of the classroom programs. 
Another example I can think of is a company called, a small company, a niche company called Butterfly Philips. They have recently started offering their services in Vizag also. This is a group of individuals from IITs, NITs and IIITs. They did not want to take up a job. So immediately after they have finished their uh, graduation, they have come together saying that they want to improve the quality of education given to children at schooling. So they are trying to prepare models that can engage students in active learning process. And I can think of several other examples where people are really not interested about taking a job, taking a job, or the conventional model of joining an organization, making a life, gaining experience. But people are more inclined to experiment in their career very in, in, in the very early phases. Uh, the third observation she makes is that by 2025, most of the baby boomers and the Gen X will be leaving the organizations, and the Gen Z, which is like people who are born after 1990, would be beginning to take up leadership positions, and they would be operating in an environment where the previous generations have exhausted all the resources, the ideas are almost gone, almost exhausted. And the conversion of an idea into application, the time that it takes is extremely small. So the kind of competitiveness that we are looking at is, is huge. Uh, so Gen Z will be facing a bigger challenge, much bigger challenge that we, than we can think of right now. Next slide, please. The current performance and the endurance of its people, processes and technologies. Now this people, processes and technologies is a framework that I have drawn from Guzar and Hamilton. Next slide please. Now let's see whatever you can think of. Now 200 variables is a huge number that anybody can talk about. I mean huge. We cannot really take 200 variables into consideration to formulate the strategy that can drive our organization towards being sustainable. That's not possible. Uh, so what I wanted to do was basically try to see what are the 10 most important you see there. The structure, agility, future focus, innovation, people are always a part of the organization. And then learning, leadership, value systems and execution. And interestingly, they were not standalone. They were not operating individually, but they were operating in, in, in combination with the other variables. Uh, so the kind of methods that you are seeing there, it says structure interacting with learning you have certain questions that you have to consider. If you take agility and agility and leadership, how does agility uh, enable better leadership? We can't see it. We have to close it. We can't Hatham studies. Hatham studies are actually uh, the result of an academic endeavor. And the ideas of Hatham studies are actually drawn into many organizations. And they are benefited. And it became a school of thought, human relations school of thought. So it's not a very bad way of beginning. But right now, it's, it's like a scratch back thought right now. Next slide, please. Uh, what next? Like I said, it is still a scratch back thought. I need to give it more shape. I need to refine this model. Perhaps you, you can help me refine this model. You can give me your ideas. Because your practitioners, maybe you have better idea of what is more important, what is not. And, and I can still continue drawing on the research. But then this is, this is my future plan. There are people who can test the model, if you want to test the model. Or the survey would go on to collect more sample size, uh, to, to collect more samples and, and perhaps more rigorously test the model. Next slide, please. Thanks.
the different products. Then how did these two companies end up in producing drinking water? They are American companies and uh, there is a French company, a small company, which was producing drinking water. Even in Europe, in some countries, you are advised not to drink tap water when you go to the bathroom, when you brush your teeth. But in North America, whether you go to the uh, bathroom to brush your teeth or when you take a bath, you can drink that water, it's pure. And now it is recommended the tap water is better than the bottled water. <laughs> Because the bottled water is kept in the plastic bottle. The plastic bottle has some chemicals which are not good for health. So in our home, I have four doctors. My two daughters are doctors. My sons-in-law are do doctors. They don't drink bottled water. And we don't drink bottled water. But then, when the great CEO of Indian Origin took over Pepsi because she already had the product differentiation as a strategy. So she looked at the globe, not just America, but the globe. In the rest of the world, you can't drink tap water. So if you can't drink tap water, I remember in 1980s when I was traveling in India, we used to rush in the train to get this lady from the platform. So Nori must have looked at that. There is an opportunity for product differentiation. So they, they also looked at the French company which was already uh, producing the bottled water. She took the opportunity and she went on a mass scale called scale of operations. And then she started producing the bottled water, which is very successful. Then of course, Coke followed now. Because once they looked at the global market, they saw that there is a good opportunity for bottled water. Now, if I gave you the impression that product differentiation or cost leadership strategy is stated, the company doesn't change, I must have given you wrong information. The strategy that you adapt is appropriate for the time when you are planning to grow. And as you look at the markets, the political, social, economic environment in the global market, your strategies have to change. So that's why Coke also changed. It, it is a cost leadership strategy company, it's a single product company, but when they looked at the whole globe, where you can't drink the tap water, they adapted the product differentiation. And now, once they have adapted from Coke to drinking bottled water, now there is nowhere to stop. Coke is coming up with orange juice. They have taken over the company which was very successful in producing orange juice. Pepsi was already in that market. So there is a competition, in other words, you can say they are both product differentiation companies with a slight difference. For Coke, the single product, cost leadership is still the strategy as far as Coke is concerned. But for the other products, there is a slight product differentiation strategy. So the focus is on cost leadership for Coke, the focus for Pepsi is on product differentiation. Since they can't compete on the software of this. I also request sir, to hand over the momentum to Professor Devi Subhara. Thank you, sir. What will be arranged after the dinner to the city for all the delegates? Now I request all the delegates to kindly join us in her and Dr. N. Malika Rao to kindly hand out the presentation.
development contributes to the creation of firm-specific knowledge and skill when it is aligned with the strategic goals of the organization. A strategic perspective to human resource development therefore involves multi-level conceptualization beyond new levels. Universities. He was a member of the Vishakapatnam team which won the first prize in national competition for young executives held by ISTD at Delhi in 1985. Presently the chairman of ISTD Vizag chapter. The first speaker, Mr. Vijay Sinha. Mr. Vijay Sinha is working presently as head HR for JSW Energy Limited which is a part of $8 billion JSW Group company to provide training on the real-time PC-based power plant simulator. Mr. Vijay has rich and varied experience of more than eight and retail. And the second speaker for today's session, Dr. Aran Malikarjan. Dr. Aran Malikarjan is a Vice President HR Asia with Myron Matrix. He entered, he earned MBA, MPM, LLM degrees in addition to his PhD degree for his thesis on strategic human resources and competency development. With this, I call upon Alekia for the further proceedings. Now I hand this session over to the chairperson, Shivaya Lekisa. Dr. Andy Malakarjan Rao, Mr. Vijay Sinha, Presidentary Father Dias, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon to all of you. This session, HID a strategic perspective. From I would like to share some of, some of my thoughts as a practicing manager from one of the most important food industries that we see. I am happy Mr. Sena is here from JSW Energy, where my good friend and batchmate Mr. HR Lal. He is heading the HR. Voyage is a 12,000 crore company today and uh, is one of the biggest uh, industrial grandmas in the whole of South India. We have got about 18,000 uh, workforce and uh, we are the first countries, uh, first integrated uh, shore based uh, integrated steel plant. And uh, I must uh, share on this occasion. We literally walk through fire. By this I mean, the company was commissioned in the year 1990 and due to losses year after year for various reasons, the company was almost on the verge of reference to BFR in the year 1997. 